To all the moms who are with us today on behalf of the Hall of Fame, a happy Mother's Day to you all. Your children thank you for being the greatest moms that you can be. We're so glad that you all chose to come to Cooperstown to celebrate this very historical weekend with us. We truly thank you for coming. We have two important ceremonies today. The second one is this afternoon at 2.30 when we dedicate Diamond Dreams, our new women in baseball exhibit. And the other one is right now. So I'd like to introduce to you the chairman of the Baseball Hall of Fame, the dynamic, the visionary, Jane Forbes Clark. Thank you, Jeff. Good morning and welcome to Cooperstown and to the Hall of Fame. Today is a very important day in the history of the Hall of Fame as we dedicate this new wonderful statue. To help celebrate and to unveil our permanent tribute to the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, there are some distinguished guests here, I should say, dais on the benches that I'd like to introduce you to. Jane Moffitt. Jane played in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. She toured with the Springfield, Illinois Sallies before joining the league in 1949. She had her best season in 1952 for teams in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek, hitting 351, playing in the outfield, first base, and catching. And today, she serves as the treasurer of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Welcome, Jane. Stanley Blyfeld. Stanley was born in Brooklyn and was president of the National Sculptor Society from 1991 to 1993. He's a very accomplished artist and his famous seven-foot-high bronze lone sailor, which symbolizes all of the men and women of the armed forces, stands at the Visitor Center in Washington, D.C. Stanley is not only the sculptor of Johnny Padres and Roy Campanella, which you see out here, but of the statue that we're unveiling today. Don Sanders and his wife, Chris. Don and Chris live in Houston, and Don was a minority owner of the Astros for nearly a decade. And in 2000, Don teamed with Nolan Ryan and Nolan's sons, Reed and Reese, to launch Ryan Saunders Baseball, which operates the highly successful Round Rock Express the AAA affiliate of the Houston Astros, and the Corpus Christi Hooks, the AA affiliate of the Astros. And Don and Chris have very generously funded this tribute to the women of the All-American -Girl, All Girls League. And Dale Petrowski, President of the Hall of Fame. Also with us in the front row, won 318 games, managed the all-women Colorado Silver Bullets, here with his wife Nancy, class of 1997, Phil Negro. The ace of the Philly staff for 14 of his 19 seasons, six consecutive 20-win seasons, and 286 career wins, the class of 1976, Robin Roberts. <laughs> These numbers speak for themselves. 5,714 strikeouts, 324 victories, 27 seasons, 12 one-hitters, seven no-hitters, here with his wife, Ruth, class of 1999, Nolan Ryan. Last year, we finished a major three-year renovation that has completely changed the look and the feel of the museum and it has allowed us to redesign, to redevelop, and to reposition our ex exhibitions. The latest exhibit to be completely redesigned is Diamond Dreams, our women in baseball exhibit, which opened this weekend. One event involved a Janice Mall who happened to be a reporter 
for the Los Angeles Times, who happened to contact Bill Gafoli, the Hall of Fame's publicity director. Her timing was great because Bill and Ted Spencer had been thumbing through some baseball cards that Karen, uh, Sharon Repke, and they were t discussing the possibilities of establishing a women in baseball exhibit. The second one was the event that was formed by the AAG PBL. They formed a committee to look further into the opening the door for us at the Hall of Fame. The committee was composed of Lynn Harbour, a writer from Boston, Karen Kunkel, Sharon Repke, Danielle Barber, and Dottie Collins. Their first report to the membership announced the AAG PBL at bat. It is the first inning, the first hitter walked, and we are now on first base. Today, we have crossed home plate. <clears throat> There were many obstacles to overcome before the Women in Baseball exhibit became a reality. We had over 200 ball players who were members of the association. And when you get that many women together, among that many individuals, disagreements were bound to exist. And the Hall of Fame project was no exception. Some lobbied for recognition of the whole league. Others wanted to petition to induct selected individuals. Fortunately, the majority of the players ascribed to recognition of the whole league. Ted Spencer at this point happened to commend Dottie Collins as the glue that held everything together until the Hall of Fame opened its women baseball exhibit on November 5, 1988. Many ball players, their families, well-wishers, and friends attended that event. Today we have 50 ball players attending this event. The dedication of this life-size bronze statue by the Hall of Fame is an historical event that complements the opening of the Women in Baseball display which will take place this afternoon. It is without reservation a once in a lifetime event that will remain in our memories forever and be recorded for posterity. There was, there is, and there will always be an All-American Girls Baseball League. <clears throat> We're all for one. We're one for all. And we are All-Americans. The dedication of this statue by the Hall of Fame is a very unique honor for the American Girls Baseball League. I want to thank Jane Clark, Dale Petrosky, Ted Spencer, Dan and Chris Sanders for commissioning this statue because by so doing, you have emphasized the role of the American Girls Baseball League history of baseball for those of us here today and for generations to come. Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite Jane, Stanley, Don, Chris, Dale to join me up here in unveiling the statue.